It was an absolutely gorgeous day today, and even though we're still in the middle of winter, that little bit of warmth in the sunshine really made it feel like spring was on its way. Over the past few months, the plots got really neglected, so we've come down today with the intention of giving it a good tidy up and get things all in order, ready for spring. That is going to take more than today, but we did really well. Isaac spent some time making a beam frame for his patch today and Imogen tidied hers and we decided to make the area where the polytunnel used to be, the one that blew away, into a nice little seating area where we can sit in the sunshine and enjoy a brew and a biscuit. I think as a gardener you can never really sit still and just enjoy it. You always notice something that needs doing. So here I am collecting the weeds out of the horseradish pot. The next job was tidying the polytunnel. I found a bag of soil conditioner left over from last year so I was able to top up my bed ready to plant something out. So these are my Cheats spring cabbage. Basically you buy spring cabbage from the grocery store or supermarket, you use it but you chop off the bottoms and put them in a tub of water. Once they root and get some new growth, you can plant them out. Now it's a little bit early to plant these outside, so I'm planting mine into the polytunnel and I'm gonna give them some extra protection in the form of a clear plastic box over the top for now too. These should grow on nicely and give us some good tender leaves while other things are still at the seedling stage. These broccolis had flopped over, so I'm just adding a little cane support to help them to stand up straight.
just water on the soil because if the leaves are really wet and then it's frosty at night it makes them all damaged. I'm trying not to get Because it don't want to get sunburned. And at so this time of year that can happen in the summer. At this time of year that's not likely to happen really. Yeah, um, but I mean like bit... um, through Thank the you. thing if there's sun coming through there. Yeah. Like today it's quite sunny then. You don't want it to get sunburned if you feel like That's true. <laughs> this area near the compost pile got in a real mess um, when the polytunnel blew away. To be fair, I think I'd left it in a pretty bad state anyway, but it definitely is ready for a tidy up. I like to use these pallets on end to store all my canes and sticks. They're really handy, really cheap, and they do the job really well. In between the jobs today, I took time out to have a look for signs of spring. The rhubarb has started coming up again. The horseradish has started to look like it's going to grow soon. This is a honeyberry bush. It's two different varieties grafted onto one bush because it needs two varieties to be able to bear fruit. The black currants have started to bud. And I found a bit more rhubarb. These two had a little time out messing about with some clay that they dug up. And yes, that is how heavy our soil is. It looks like fresh sheep poo. <laughs> mm. <laughs> we also made some little gnomes. It really did feel like spring was in the air today. And though I know it's still winter and there's a lot of bad weather to come, it was really nice to feel like spring is going to come. It felt really lovely to be getting this space ready for all the seedlings that are going to come. Most of the things that I've had in here over the winter look pretty dead but there were a few bits and pieces that seemed to have survived. These are some flowers that I started. Those little green spikes are from some alliums, from some seed that happened to land in my pocket on a garden visit to Bridgewater. I'm really happy that they're coming up. I can't wait to see what they look like. And these are some foxgloves. I'm going to pop those on soon. Gardening on a budget can be a bit of a challenge and one of the biggest expenses is compost, especially in the spring when there are so many seeds to sow. What I like to do is use as much spent compost as possible and just mix it in with the new. This spreads it out, makes it last much longer and most seedlings are absolutely fine with it. Seedlings don't actually need that much nutrition. It's more about it being nice and free draining. And as long as they're getting potted on regularly and planted out into good compost and soil, it'll be absolutely fine.
I definitely saved the best job till last today. Hi, so I'm here in the greenhouse. I've decided that I've had enough tidying jobs. So I've discovered some foxgloves, some apricot foxgloves that I grew, I sowed last autumn. Um, and they've been completely neglected here in the greenhouse all winter. But they're growing. There is quite a good amount of green growth, but they were all clumped into just a few modules. So what I'm doing, I'm just taking them out of those clumps and I'm planting them into separate little modules so they can grow um, and get a bit bigger before I plant them out in the spring. So I have quite a lot of foxgloves in the garden at home and also on the allotment. They're really lovely like for stature in the garden and the bees love them as well. And as you can see, these are very, very delicate little things. Hold them by the leaves where you can instead of the stem, because if you break a leaf, it's fine. The plant's not gonna die from that. Whereas if you break the stem or the roots, that's the end of your plant really. So all I'm doing is making a little hole and very gently just popping them in there. So this is a lovely job actually to be doing because it's been a long time since we've been doing any kind of potting on. I know come May time, you know, April, May, we are sick to death of potting on, but right now it's an absolute joy. And um, one thing that you can tell, like some people they pot on and there doesn't seem to be any growth, but don't, sorry, it's just my son coming in. That's, um, don't trust just what you can see on top. The way to check is check underneath to see if there are any roots because the roots will grow much, much sooner than new leaf on top. So an example of that is this nine star broccoli. Sorry, can you see it there? The nine star broccoli. Um, now, if you watched my previous video, you'll know that this one and this one were from last year from a couple of cuttings that I took. Um, as you can see from the rest of the tray, wasn't massively successful but these two look like they were doing something so I've kept them the rest were from the damaged plants after the polytunnel blew over so I'm just I popped them in in the hope that they will do something but if you look at this one this one you think oh that's promising it's got some new leaf you know everything's good this one just looks like a dead leaf stuck in the ground but if you have a look if I can just pull that you can see that there is loads and loads of root going on there loads of new root and that means the plant is growing so come the spring hopefully it will decide to show me some new growth on top as well never ever just assume that it's been a big flop and nothing's going to happen check the roots and i'm just going to carry on doing these would you like to do some darling um yeah, yeah. Do you, do you get the pot yeah, so literally all we're doing is we're pulling them apart really carefully, holding the leaves instead of the stems. Mm -hmm. Okay, because if you don't, it don't matter if you break the leaf, does it? So much. So you're pulling them apart, and then when you've got them, just make a tiny little dint oh, and right. just very gently pop them in their own little pot. Do you want to have a try? I like this one. Remember to hold the leaves, not the stem. Yeah. That's it. Because they're really delicate, those, aren't they? Yeah. That's it, and just really gently tap them in. Perfect. You don't need to press them down hard. Go on, you have a go. If you let me just loosen them a bit first for you. And there we go, some there we can do. There's one there as well. nice to be planting things again instead of tidying up, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> Do you think you're going to have any foxgloves in your patch this year? Maybe. Maybe. Don't be... Yeah, have you had enough? No. no. It's fine, you can carry on, it's okay. Yeah. Have you already done one? No. I 
should find a label. Does it still have a label? Oh, we use that one. Oh, these fox gloves. Yeah, apricot fox gloves. Why do you suppose they're called fox gloves? Remember to loosen the roots first. Because foxes have gloves. <laughs> yeah, they would make good little gloves for foxes, wouldn't they? There you yeah, go. they would. They would. That one doesn't look like it's got much root. We won't bother with that one. That one looks okay. Mm. Yeah, that one's okay. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get a full tray, but we're not far off, are we? Mm. We might be. There's two more. It's a real tiny one too, I don't think. Don't we'll try that good. one, but I don't think it's going to do much really. These ones don't have much of a root. And there's one, that's it. Done. Nice. Let's see, yeah, we'll count them up in a minute. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. And I think that might be thirty-three. Mm -hmm. And I think that might be thirty-four. Is that one more? Now only if you can eat them. So thirty-three. It'd be good if we could eat them. <laughs> yeah, you definitely can't eat foxgloves. Can you remember why? They're poisonous. They are poisonous, aren't they? Mm. So yeah. So you can touch them, but as long as you don't eat them and you don't kind of lick your fingers after them, maybe. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, yeah, you don't want to be eating foxgloves. No. no. Or stick your tongue in them. No, don't stick your tongue in them either. That would be a bad no, idea too, wouldn't, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Thank you for your help. Okay. Right, do you want to get a watering can with the rose on it so we can just give them a little water? Or do you think we should stand them in some water with it being cold? Probably stand them in some water. Okay, let's find a tray. Tip is just a bit of water that might just freeze. Yeah, that's true. Do you want to go to the greenhouse and there's one of these, like a bigger one? Can you get me that mm -hmm. and um, put just a bit of water in it, bring it in here, and we'll stand it in there. Manage. On those two. Oh, found another one. I don't know. Where, sweetheart? Just remind me. Oh, right. Yeah, I think I might put on them two nine stars that have actually taken. And then give them the best chance come the spring, since my others are all dead outside. Need some labels for them so I don't forget which one's which. Oh this one's got some good roots as well. Might just take that dead leaf off. such a joy to see proper plants proper seedlings on the greenhouse bench again time for these two to have a warm-up i got this little gas heater last year or the year before and it's absolutely brilliant for the shed makes it really warm really quick and you can just replace the gas bottle when you need to I'm planning to do some sewing at home this week. To avoid the mess, 
I'm just bringing some pre-filled trays home with me. Hope to see you next time.